If you want to know how Little Debbie affected my hometown of Parrish, Florida and the surrounding areas, I'm going to share it with you today, so stick around. Hey everybody, Catherine here, and you know on this channel I like to share with you things that are going on, not just in real estate, but life in general. So today we're going to talk about Little Debbie, who really became kind of Big Debbie, is kind of a bully kind of messed with us here. And I want to show you a little bit of the effects of what happened to her in different areas, not just Parrish, but some of the surrounding areas as well. So if you're not already a subscriber to this channel, I sure invite you to hit that subscribe button and like this video so I can keep this information coming at you. It's not just real estate stuff. It's about all the ways that we live and all of these communities and Manatee in Sarasota County. So I want to give you a quick little trip around my yard here in Parrish, Florida. Give you an idea of what happened and again this is two days after uh, the worst of the rainfall from little debbie anyway so i'll give you a little um glimpse of what happened in our yard and on our streets and stuff which is really not much but i just want you to see hold on so you can kind of see the roads here they're completely dry now but this is where all the water would run in neighborhoods like mine and my neighborhood is actually about 12 years old. Our house is 10 years old, but they started building several years prior. So if you can see kind of the yard here, there's really no standing water. Um, of course, I think we did some smart things a few years ago. Uh, we took out all the mulch, uh, which I hated. It holds a lot of bugs and it's just nasty. And we put in uh, rock around of our bed, so I really think that's a good idea for mitigation of water. Um, and of course right now, some terrible things that we're going to have to deal with are the weeds after an event like this. Now you can kind of see where all of this water is going to flow. It's going to come down to these little drainage areas. There's one across the street. You look, really, there's no standing water right now up here. But I want to show you what it's like where we did have a little bit of water, not in the house or anything like that. Now I'm being careful because I don't know what kind of critters are out here in this grass. Just got cut. It's got to get cut again. Uh, welcome to Florida in the summer. <laughs> um, but if you can see here are Arikas. Now this had a lot of water sitting in it pretty dry now and then you can kind of see where the water started here by the house had a lot of water sitting where these little black areas are oh, hello mr. lizard so you can kind of see where the water was here it's dried up now I'm sure the ground is really soggy and of course in our arecas we have quite a bit of water, but there's none left now. It's all drying up, which is really great. You can see this kind of like blackish area here where all the water was sitting. It's not sitting here anymore. Again, around here. Now, if you look back here, some of you remember I showed a video a few months ago on how this water retention pond that we have here in the back of our house was so low. Well, now you can see it's filled up. It could actually go another few feet before. Um, so that's not a big deal. And all of these retention ponds do feed into kind of one another. There are pipe systems in here. So if one gets too full, it does kind of go into another one. I don't know how that system works. I'm not an engineer. I'm not trying to be. But anyway. Oh, and here's my friends right here. These guys. They think I'm going to feed them. Not feeding you, dudes. So as you can see, there wasn't much water in the yard for very long. Again, you guys, we had so much rain in less than 24 hours. That, that hadn't happened, like I said, since 1945. I wasn't even here. Most of you weren't even here. So I can tell you right now, this that was a very rare weather experience for us. And we've been through hurricanes. You guys have seen my video on Hurricane Ian. And we didn't have that much water so but i just want to give you an idea of what it's like in some of the newer communities where the builders come in and they elevate the property and to an x zone which is a no flood zone and the water 
did run really well off of all of the yards. Haven't heard of anybody in my neighborhood that had any, any damage from water intrusion. Um, just water sitting in the yard for a few days. But remember, that doesn't mean that there wasn't flooding. I'm going to show you some videos and some pictures of other areas in Parrish. And it wasn't just Parrish. It was Sarasota and Bradenton and Lakewood Ranch. And all of these areas, we got hit pretty bad. A lot of rain in a short amount of time, as I said already. So I'm just letting you know, just because we didn't have water damage or water intrusion in our community doesn't mean that it didn't happen in other communities because it did. And I'm still gathering information on that. And we're going to share that too. So I want to share the rainfall amounts with you so you can kind of put this in perspective for yourself. And remember, when Debbie was affecting us with all of this huge amount of rainfall, she was 100 miles off the coast. And remember, Parrish is about 40 minutes inland from the coast. And that is an amazing amount of rain coming from those bands. And Debbie was still only categorized as a tropical storm at that point. And remember that these rainfall amounts hadn't really been seen in these areas since 1945. That's a long time ago. So let's check out the rainfall amounts for the areas of Parrish and the surrounding areas. Here are the National Weather Service rainfall totals in Manatee County now again, look at this. This is from August the 2nd to the 5th. So that's a lot of rain in a few days span. Now in a 24 hour period, 24 to 36 hours, they're saying that there was a little over 14 and a half inches in Paris. So again, a lot of rain in such a short amount of time. These are the overall totals. Overall totals for the Lakewood Ranch area, uh, just under 13 inches. And then you'll see here the Sarasota Bradenton uh, Airport area, 11 inches. Um, Lake Manatee State Park, almost 11 inches, a little over 10 and a half inches there. And then if we go down and look at the same amount of days from August 2nd to the 5th in Sarasota um, proper, Sarasota, not just county, but Sarasota itself, the city, the town. Look at this, Woo! almost 18 inches there. And then the other location of Sarasota, 13.22 um, and then of course it gets down into uh, Venice and that sort of place. So all of these rainfalls over a few days it's just a lot of rain for the canals and the lakes and the and the community uh, area retention ponds and of course the Manatee Lake and of course Philippi Creek. There's just so many waterways here and they were just inundated with too much water. And if we look at the wind amounts for these areas, we'll see that Palmetto actually had the highest reading for wind at 70 miles per hour. Anna Maria Island, 64 miles per hour. And of course, near the airport, 63. Now, I think most of this was going on while I was sleeping that Sunday night. <laughs> so I don't remember hearing it. All I remember hearing is how much rain was falling. It was weird. And keep in mind that Lakewood Ranch is about 30 feet above sea level and Parrish is about 42 to 43 feet above sea level. And then on Monday, as we were all waking up and going to work, I know I wasn't going to get out there because I've seen, <laughs> I've seen how it is. First of all, people just driving around here during nice weather, crazy drivers, um, but especially when there's flooding. And I've seen it before just in our normal uh, rainfall that we have where a lot of low-lying area roads will, will flood out a little bit. And I don't like driving through that. But on Monday, while people were probably trying to go to work or, or coming home maybe from a night shift or something, there were several road closures in both Manatee and Sarasota County. And unfortunately, there were several people that needed to be rescued, not only from their cars, coming home and driving through these uh, areas that maybe they thought they could make it through and they just couldn't. The cars went off the road uh, because the, the water came in so quickly and other people that had to be rescued from their homes. So I've heard that in Sarasota County, there were about 500 people that needed to be rescued, um, whether it was from cars or from their homes. And in Manatee County, it looks like there were well over 200 people that needed to be rescued from either their car or their home, their community. And 
about 130 or more pets that needed to be rescued. Now remember, in a lot of these areas, especially up here in Parrish where there's still some working farms, you've got people with horses and cattle and goats and that sort of thing. And there was a lot of pets that needed to be rescued. And unfortunately, which really breaks your heart, there's a lot of pets that still haven't been reunited with their owners. So there's a hotline. I'm going to share that information with you uh, at the end of the video. So make sure you stick around uh, because there's a lot of people that are still missing their pets. And you know how traumatic this is, not just for the owners, but for those poor little pets. I want to show you this satellite map. Again, I wanted to show you this area that got flooded just to give you an example of what happens here when we have uh, this kind of um, rain that we haven't had since 1945. Um, but anyway, you'll see this is Gamble Creek Road here. And then I live over in this community. And then as we head this way, um, you'll see that little sign that says Gamble Creek Farm. So if you've seen my video that talks about Gamble Creek Farms, that, that really nice little um, area that we go and get sandwiches and soups and fresh, you know, fresh meats and that sort of thing. This is where Gamble Creek Farms, that's the entrance of that. So, um, and, and then if you go down here, you'll see Twin Rivers. And this is the first entrance into um, that community. Uh, and again, where my mom lives. So I'm going to make it bigger here. So again, you can see now, okay, so I made this a little bit bigger so you can understand. This is that water retention pond that they put there to kind of handle uh, any flooding that comes from that little bridge there off of Golf Course Road into this. Um, but it just, it was so inundated with water. It was flooded. And uh, here are some pictures that people took. Uh, my mom sent me a few pictures of it. They couldn't get out of their community. They had to go all the way around to Rye, all the way to State Road 64, and then back up to Upper Manatee and Fort Hamer just to get all the way back around if they wanted to come to my house um, or to go. I think my mom had a doctor's appointment or something crazy like that. But anyway, so you can kind of see how close that was to us without us being affected by any of it, but that bridge was out for about two and a half days. And again, the homes in Twin Rivers did not have water intrusion or flooding in the homes, um, in the yards. Of course, there was standing water. We all had that for a few days, um, but there was no damage done to the homes in Twin Rivers. But going from my house to my mother's home and the first entrance there, there is something called Gamble Creek. And that creek, of course, was just at capacity and flooded. And I'm going to show you this video here where Manatee County government, uh, they made this video and they had to, of course, rescue people that were trying to get in back to their homes. So look at this great footage that was taken by uh, Manatee County government. It's a drone video of a rescue that happened right outside what I just showed you here off golf course in, in Twin Rivers. And unfortunately, I think that this person thought that they could make it all the way into uh, their community. And that had to be so freaking frightening. Oh my gosh, it had to be frightening. So let's listen in here and see what happened. Hello, hey, this is Commissioner Van Hoff. Uh, got a car just went over into Gamble Creek. Um, we're on golf course road by the entrance to Twin Rivers. Hello? Yes, I got you. Okay. Golf what is the address of emergency? Golf Course Road at the entrance to Twin Rivers. Twin Rivers Trail and Golf Course Road. And we have a SUV that got swept off of Golf Course into Gamble Creek. There's obviously at least one occupant. Um, it's swift water, man. Now, another aspect of the storm and the flooding that many people experienced um, and I and I need to share it with you because it's just the truth. I know a lot of people don't want to talk about it, but it's the truth. Um, there was strategic releases of water from the Manatee Dam. It's become a big controversy now um, as to whether it was the right move, was it the right timing? And there are a lot of people saying they didn't get the right kind of warnings. The warnings they did get were very confusing. And when they called the 311 number, of course, the lines were jammed up and they couldn't get in. So there's a lot of controversy about the water that was released. They say they're strategic releases, that they're, it's very common. 
Um, and of course, a lot of homeowners are saying that cannot be the case because prior to those releases, our homes and our lands were fined. And then after that release, within several minutes, our homes were flooded. Again, most of these properties are low-lying rural properties. And if you see this map here, this is Jim Davis Road. Now we take Jim Davis Road all the time because it cuts me through to areas like Salt Meadows over where Meritage is building. It takes me over to places like Homes by West Bay, Crosswind. Now none of those places were actually flooded. I'm not saying those places were flooded because they were not. They were not flooded. But the streets in between were flooded. So this is what you might hear if you're reading about how Debbie affected Parrish. You're going to see this controversy going on about the strategic water release from the dam, uh, the Manatee Dam. And I think moving forward, there's going to be a lot of discussion about whether it was done properly or if the communication services were good enough to warn people ahead of time. So that's something you're going to see. And I did want to bring it up here. And I'm going to read what they said, what, what the Manatee County government said, um, the Waterworks D Division for Manatee, what they had to say about those strategic dam releases. And the county said that in a news release, that strategic release was made in cooperation with a supporting agency. And of course, it was aimed at managing water levels, ensuring public safety. Um, it is a precautionary measure to mitigate the impact of the recent heavy rainfall and to ensure the Manatee Dam remains in good structural condition and of course their priority is safety and well-being of their residents but you're going to be reading about it so i always want to be forthcoming and let you know that there was some serious flooding in parish but not in most of the master plan communities so that's something you need to know if you're still planning on maybe this being a, a home for you this being a new town for you it's still a great area to check out uh, but I want you to know the truth. Um, and I think that when you're reading about this, you can't say, well, gosh, those that realtor never said anything about it because I'm saying something about it, right? You can do your own research. And I really, really would ask that most of you join in with just really praying for these people, sending your thoughts and prayers to these people that were affected, not just here in Parrish, but in Sarasota, in Lakewood Ranch. But a lot of these people were in X zones which technically do not require you to have a flood insurance policy. But I think after this, and I can be really honest and upfront with you guys, I'm thinking about getting my own flood insurance policy. Uh-huh, I'm thinking after seeing this, gotta put my smart girl hat on, and I'm actually getting quotes today, and I'll share that with you as well. So I think it's important for everyone to assess their own area, even though we had no water in our yard, any kind of damage, any kind of water intrusion, I just think that because this was such um, a quick amount of water in such a short amount of time, you never know. The other thing that my husband and I were discussing is what if we had been getting the normal amounts of rains that we have during summer? Again, I told you before, we kind of had a drought the last two summers. The water levels in all of the lakes and the little retention ponds like you saw in my backyard, they were so low you could see the pipes. And now, of course, you've seen where they're, they're filled up. But what if we'd already been having a record amounts of water and then this event happened? So something to think about, people. You can always get a separate flood insurance policy if, and I don't make money by giving you any kind of information like that. <laughs> I don't have any side deals with any insurance carriers. Um, but I just think it's something that you need to be aware of if you want to protect your uh, property and your belongings and that sort of thing from this kind of thing happening maybe in a community in which you live or might live. So what if you were affected by Hurricane Debbie and you had some damage? Well, the first thing you want to do is check with your own homeowner's insurance policy and find out did the water damage come from above, meaning was it roof related? Did it blow in? Was there a crack in a window or something like that that brought water intrusion? Um, if that is the case, then it might be covered under your homeowner's insurance policy. However, if it is ground flooding, which is what this uh, weather situation was, then you would have to have a separate flood insurance policy for 
uh, them to have any kind of coverage for you. So first you need to determine whether that was the case or not. Was it from the air? Or was it from the ground? Make sure you are checking around your home, in your garage, everything around your home. If you've got a pool, just make sure you have uh, no damage that you can note for yourself. If so, then you need to make sure you get pictures and document everything. Now, what if you are a snowbird or a vacation home here and you're not here a lot and you want to know what happened? Well, the best thing for you to do, of course, is to talk to your neighbors. Hopefully you have some relationships with your neighbors. Talk to your neighbors, find out what happened to them, have them check your house out. Um, you can also talk to, if you're in a community that has an HOA, see what your HOA has to say about things, or just go on uh, area Facebook pages and see what your neighbors are saying. Now, the first thing I did was get in touch with all of the people that I had uh, under contract, whether they were buying a resale or a new construction home, and just had them check to make sure that there was no damage. Uh, to make sure that they made any updates if there was any damage, that it was all documented, that they had professionals keeping an eye on what the damage might be. And if it was new construction, I was talking with all the sales reps in those areas and with the construction managers to see um, if the community had flooding, if the houses looked good, because I wanted a paper trail just for them to say, oh no, everything's perfect. And of course, so far, I haven't had anybody say anything about whether they had damage or not. Everything looked like everything in the master plan communities was okay. So quickly, we're gonna talk about what if you are under contract on a home, you haven't closed yet in either Manatee or Sarasota County. Um, you need to reach out to your professional real estate agent and see how you handle this situation because there are provisions in the contract and your agent can read that to you, provisions in the contract to um, really protect you in case there was some damage during Debbie. Now, if it's a resale home, again, there's provisions in the contract. And let's say that you've already had your inspection, your past your inspection, you're just waiting to close. Well, again, you're going to have to talk to your real estate professional about what you do in that case because you're already past that inspection deadline. You probably can't say, hey, can we come back out and, uh, you know, inspect again? That's probably not going to work. But again, you talk to your professional. The other thing that you need to keep in mind is that you should ask your real estate professional to have the seller, whoever the seller's agent is, update their seller's property disclosure. And that can be done, it's a different form. So you've already seen your seller's property disclosure. There's another form where they can add to it. It's just an update. So they're supposed to let you know if there's been any damage on that home. Again, let your real estate professional read those provisions in the as is or the standard contract about this kind of thing, what they call acts of God. I call them acts of the devil, but that's just me but make sure you talk to your professional about that. What about new construction? If you're under contract on a new construction home and you haven't closed yet, and you haven't gotten to the point of your new home orientation walk, well, I really encourage you to take advantage of having a third party inspection prior to that new home orientation or whatever the builder's policy is. So most builders, almost all of them, they do allow you to have a third party inspection. Sometimes they like it to be a few days before that new home orientation walk. Um, sometimes it's the day of or the afternoon of, and then they take that, uh, the results of that new home orientation and they compare it with their construction manager and their list of things that they are in-house list of things that need to be done. I really encourage you to do that. And yes, that is going to cost you as a buyer. Sometimes those are 400 up to 500, depends on what kind of inspections you want to have done. But I really encourage you to do that. What if on new construction, you've already paid for someone to do a third party inspection and uh, you're past your new home orientation. You just have another few days or you have a, another week before you close. Again, talk to your buyer's agent that you're working with, ask them what you should do in that scenario. Um, and certainly they can talk with the builder and see what to do in that scenario. Sometimes you can bring someone else out, um, but I would definitely make sure that you have in an email 
that uh, that construction manager, that builder, um, did not have any flood related issues because of Debbie. You want that in writing. So make sure you talk to your professional about that as well. And I do want to stress if you have uh, any kind of damage or you suspect that you might have damage from any kind of water intrusion, any kind of flooding, definitely reach out to water mitigation professionals. And I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna just highlight that word professional. You know how it is after every kind of weather related damage that happens, whether it's in Florida or anywhere, there are all kinds of professionals that come out of the woodwork. Uh, a lot of them will come down from other states and there's nothing wrong. Just make sure who you talk to and who you get in your home is actually a professional. Just make sure that they're licensed, that they have the necessary insurance and that sort of thing to make sure that your home is mitigated from any water damage. Because again, it's hot here. You know how it is. There could be termite damage later on. There could be mold later on. So you want to get that taken care of as soon as possible. And please, I'm going to remind you, do yourself a favor. Keep every piece of paperwork of any work done on your home. Because if you ever do go to sell, you have to disclose this, that you had some mitigation from, you know, hurricane or a tropical storm, Debbie, whatever they're calling it. You need to make sure you have that paperwork, how it was mitigated. You need proof that it was taken care of. So please do yourself a favor for the future. Save all of that information so that you can show later on that you mitigated it properly. So what if you were affected by this and you need to know what to do next? So I'm going to give you a few places that you can call some organizations along with the county that you can call, kind of see what's out there for you, what kind of help you can get. Or maybe you want to donate to some of the organizations so that you can help with any kind of relief, whether it's um, clothing, like I said before, food, water, um, any of that sort of thing. I want to give you that information. So one of the first places you should check, of course, is with the FEMA assistance. So um, this, of course, is for Manatee County. There's a number here you can call if you want to apply for FEMA assistance uh, by going disasterassistance.gov. Um, there's an app. There's also an 800 number. So if you want to pause this and get that information, do that now. And Manatee County is also doing a Hurricane Debbie impact. Uh, they want you to let them know what your unmet needs are. So here is a website and there's a survey they take there. You can tell them, hey, we need this. Um, again, it's government, so I don't know how organized and it is and that sort of thing, but it's certainly a place to kind of start. So what if you have cleanup you need to do on your property Here's a place you can call Hurricane Debbie Cleanup Hotline. And um, there's also a crisiscleanup.org website. And it's just a way for you to connect with your uh, with volunteers that who may be able to assist you. Doesn't mean they are, but hopefully they can help you with cleaning all the gunk out, uh, maybe trees that need to be cut down, tarps and debris. Um, and of course, they're going to caveat that by saying the service is not guaranteed because there's an overwhelming need. Uh, but definitely reach out to them and see what can be done. This, of course, is Manatee County telling you what to do uh, with your storm debris, how it's going to be picked up. So make sure you check out mymanatee.org slash storm for your debris pickup when that starts and how to separate it. And of course, there are some ways that you can donate help. Uh, one is called One Mission Disaster Response. Um, uh, you can see this here. There's a PayPal way if you want to send money to um, help uh, provide some relief for people that were affected by it. And the other one here in my local community, and there are several other uh, churches that are taking donations. So like I said, get on the Facebook pages and check out. But I know that Parish United Methodist Church, they have a food bank. Um, and I know that they are taking food and that sort of thing and, and you know, all kinds of donations. Um, if you get on their website here, you can kind of see uh, what people need. Of course, you can always go through the Salvation Army. You can contact a local chapter here in Manatee or Sarasota County and see how you can help, maybe what items they need or uh, financial donations. So definitely check out those areas.
And those are just a few ways around town that you can see how you can help again. Uh, it could just be physical donations or it could be financial donations, but definitely check out the Facebook pages, find out what people need in your area. Maybe just in your community, you can help out. A lot of communities have come together. Um, again, there weren't as many as you think. It's just uh, unfortunate for those areas that were affected. Um, they're gonna need a lot of help. So hopefully um, that help always comes in. I know how neighbors are around here. We have great people living in these areas and I know the community is going to come together like they always do. So I told you I'd pop back in and, and let you know what kind of quotes I was getting to get my own flood insurance policy. And um, I've heard back from uh, my guy and um, he was telling me that for the low end, just the minimum requirements for flood insurance, it would be about $500 a year, which is not really bad. But if I want to have a policy that would actually take care of more of the value, an upper limit for my home and my belongings, it all depends on what kind of stuff you have and what kind of home you have and square footage and that sort of thing and how much it would cost to get all of those items fixed, the policy could be about $1,093 a year. So $1,093 for the high end, $500 for the low end. So we're going to talk about it and make a decision, but I think we're going to end up with getting us a little bit of flood insurance policy. Mm -hmm. Thanks again for your thoughts and your prayers for all of the people affected by this and the animals. Again, we have animals out there that haven't found their owners yet, and that's really sad and um, that's really traumatic for both the owners and the animals. And if that's you, make sure you're checking uh, that animal hotline there through Manatee County. I'm going to be here to update you on all of these kinds of things that are going on in these areas because if you ever think you're going to move to an area like this, you need to know the truth. You need to know what's really going on out there. Um, and again, I just, I just want to make sure you understand this did not happen in most of the communities. We're safe, totally no problem. Um, but knowing what's happening around the areas is uh, helpful for you if you still want to make an informed decision about maybe coming to these areas. If I can help in any way, I'd be so honored to chat with you about your journey. It's still a great place to live and uh, you would enjoy a lot of these communities here in Manatee or Sarasota County. So thanks for joining. I'm Catherine. Listen, make sure you subscribe to this channel so I can keep this honest information coming out to you so you always are in the know of what's going on in these areas if it's on your radar. I'll see you next week.